Welcome back to part three of this video. In this video, we're going to talk about Boxer twin engines, in particular in respect to classic motorcycles. Boxer twins are a particular type of flat engine. A flat engine is where you have looking end on on the crankshaft, if that, if this is the crankshaft and that's the crankcase, you have the cylinders opposing each other 180 degrees apart. And you have your piston at each end, quan rods going into the crank. It's generally in pairs, so it can be a two cylinder, four cylinder, six, eight, 10, 12, and so on. There's no reason it couldn't be an uneven number, but it would be more difficult to balance. So the flat engine was arguably a development of and from the parallel twin. If you remember in the last video, this was the arrangement of a 360 degree parallel twin, both pistons going up and down together on what is effectively one crankshaft or one crank in the crankshaft. Now, you might also remember I diverted briefly into V-twins and suggested that if we moved the cylinders apart, as shown up here, rather than have them in line, we could get the con rods closer together. This is what it looks like with the con rods side by side on a very short crank pin in a V-twin. Now, if you actually splayed one of these con rods right over such that they were 180 degrees apart so this would look like that get rid of that then what you have is a flat twin engine so if i quickly draw some roughly some pistons in here So what you've got there is both pistons actually moving together backwards and forwards which makes it behave again like a one cylinder very much like this 360 degree twin because both pistons are reciprocating back and forward together. So the balancing is very much like this engine here or a very large one cylinder engine. The timing of the pulses, however, is different to the 360 degree parallel twin because you've actually swung the cylinder by 180 degrees. You're going to end up with the timing very much like a 180 degree parallel twin. So the, part, the firing pulse will be 180 and 540. So you've ended up with the same problems of balancing this engine, but you don't have the even firing pulse. You've ended up with the very irregular firing pulse from the 180 degree parallel twin. So this is not a boxer twin. This is a flat twin, uh, sometimes referred to as a 180 degree V twin even though with the cylinders at 180 degrees there is no V. So this arrangement doesn't seem like a great design particularly as a two-cylinder. However if you built an engine with banks of these side by side particularly four or more you could design this engine as if it was a boxer engine which we'll get into in a minute of half the number of cylinders. So Ferrari designed a flat 12 in their 512 Berlinetta Boxer. Oddly enough it was called a Boxer even though it's not strictly a Boxer engine. It had six of these arranged side by side. Now I imagine the balancing on that was designed as if it was in effect a flat six and each pair of these uh, pistons would be acting in effect like a one cylinder. Now why would you do this? The only 
benefit I can see is that you, the engine would be narrower because you end up with these conrods side by side, the, the whole engine is narrower than a boxer. I'll get to that soon. We will see the crank arrangement on that. Anyway, this video is not about this type of flat engine. I just thought I'd show you that because it's an important variation on the flat twin. So if you were to develop a flat engine from the 180 degree parallel twin, which is this arrangement, what you would do would be swing this cylinder and piston over 180 degrees. Now I'll quickly draw that up. So this is the typical arrangement for a boxer twin. What you've got is both pistons moving out together and in together, completely in phase, and that means that the primary and secondary forces are always completely balanced. However, again, you do end up with this rocking couple because the pistons and conrods are not in alignment. However, it's much better than a 180 degree twin engine because it's uh, very much closer, this distance, this separation distance, is very much closer than in the parallel twin arrangement. And that's because with a parallel twin, you've got to have the cylinders further apart because they are in the same plane. Here, because it's over this side, we can bring the crank in and just have a one web between and you end up with two main bearings quite close together. So again, when this piston go, when the pistons both get to the top, you're going to end up with a, a couple, more correctly here, that way, and when they get to the bottom, you're going, it's going to reverse. Here's an overhead photo of a BMW Boxer Twin. You can see the offset of the cylinders. The offset is equal to the width of a conrod and the width of that web between the two conrods. It's not a big distance, but it's enough to result in that rocking moment. Both the primary and secondary forces generated by the pistons create these rocking couples. These can be reduced by adding weights onto the crankshaft, so you end up with quite a smooth running engine. You might notice with this engine arrangement, as with the 360 degree parallel twin, both pistons go up towards top dead centre simultaneously, so pumping losses are relatively high and crankcase breathing needs to be managed well. The picture here shows a R100 BMW crankshaft. As with all motorcycles with the crankshaft running longitudinally in the motorcycle, you do get some gyroscopic or torque reaction effects. This is not a vibration, but it's a reaction from the rotating parts accelerating or decelerating. It's generally fairly disconcerting to people that aren't used to it, but once you are used to it, it's something you don't even think about. Modern iterations of this engine use counter-rotating shafts to negate the torque reaction and also other balance shafts to counter the rocking couple. So as far as the timing of the power pulses goes, both cylinders arrive at top dead center at the same time so on one revolution, one will fire, and on the other revolution, the other will fire. So you end up with that 360 degree spacing between the firing pulses. And that's why a boxer twin sounds very much like a 360 degree parallel twin. It's got that very even thrum, that very even flat sound. And here's a sample of that sound. Here's my R100 BMW with fairly open exhausts. The 
first engine of this design ever produced was by Daimler in 1899. It was a 1700cc engine. It produced five horsepower at just under a thousand RPM. So these things were very slow revving back in that, those days. The first motorcycle produced with this engine layout, I believe, was a Douglas in 1905. It was actually installed with a crankshaft going across the frame, so the two cylinders were longitudinally placed in the, in the motorcycle. This was good to get a chain drive or a belt drive going, but it was a bad arrangement as far as cooling of the rear cylinder goes. It was actually the British that pioneered the use of this engine in motorcycles. In the early 1900s, there was a whole slew of manufacturers that were producing motorcycles with this engine. It wasn't long before these manufacturers started arranging the boxer engine with the crank longitudinally in the motorcycle with the cylinders sticking out each side. This was a much better arrangement for cooling as both cylinders were well out in the airstream. This also made it very suitable for using a shaft drive since the crankshaft was already oriented in the same direction as the shaft needed to be. Some motorcycles with the engine mounted this way still persisted in using a chain drive which meant they would have had to have some bevel gears to change the direction of the rotation. It wasn't until 1923 that BMW first produced a motorcycle with this engine and they have become synonymous really with this engine in motorcycles. Even Harley-Davidson and Indian had a go at producing this engine for motorcycles. In 1942, Harley produced the XA. It was a 23 horsepower, 740cc flat twin. Other manufacturers that produced the Boxer Twin, there was Ural, of course, which was effectively a copy of the BMW Boxer by the Russians. There was Marusho Lilac, a Japanese manufacturer. They produced um, some pretty little boxer twins. And of course BMW, as I've already mentioned, have produced boxer twins from 1923 right through to present day. The recent ones are water-cooled, uh, have balance shafts, a uh, very mo modern interpretation, but still basically this design. Now, while we're here talking about Boxer Twins, let's do a brief diversion into Boxer Fours. Honda produced the Goldwing in the early 70s, and it was a Boxer Four. The beauty of the four-cylinder Boxer is that you can completely eliminate this rocking couple because the, the other pair of cylinders you put in actually counteract the forces. So the way you would arrange the other half of the engine is like this. Right, in the position shown, these two pairs of pistons are causing a reaction in this direction. So get rid of that and as you can see these ones are going that way so they're producing a couple in that direction so one's going this way and this this pair are going that way so they balance each other out and as the pistons reverse the reverse happens so this is a beautifully smooth engine and the same goes for six eight and multiple versions you can produce a very very smooth engine also the pumping losses and the crankcase breathing issues you had with the twin cylinder boxer have disappeared because as the two pistons move out to top dead center the other two are moving down to bottom dead center so the crankcase volume always remains constant 
Now, the downside, I, I guess, in a motorcycle of using four or more cylinders is that you can't really very effectively make it air-cooled as the rear cylinders would run hotter than the front cylinders. That's why Honda went to water cooling with their Goldwing. The other disadvantage of this arrangement, either as a two-cylinder or four-cylinder, is that it's a very unwieldy shape and it's difficult to mount in the motorcycle. Um, the best proven ways across the frame a la BMW and gold, the Goldwing, it still makes it a very wide motorcycle. It does give it a very low center of gravity though. And you've also got issues with ground clearance. So you, you've got this compromise you need to make you want to place the engine as low as possible to get the lowest center of gravity, but you also want to place it high enough to provide adequate ground clearance. The engine layout with the cylinders sticking out each side provides superb air cooling to the cylinders. It also provides exceptional maintenance access. So this concludes this video. The next video will be about V-twins. Thanks for watching.